I love driving this truck. If you haven't driven it yet, just wait until you get behind the wheel. It's a workhorse and technological marvel. Our engineering team has spent years developing and testing this new equipment, and I'm confident you'll enjoy many years of reliable and clean operation if you just follow a few simple procedures. Now let's start with a look at the components. Here's the most significant addition to the vehicle. This diesel particulate filter, or DPF, we'll call it the exhaust filter, kind of like the way the engine's air filter cleans dirty air before it enters the engine. This exhaust filter cleans exhaust gases before they are expelled into the atmosphere. In fact, this exhaust filter, along with other equipment on this vehicle, is designed to significantly clean up the exhaust emissions of diesel-powered vehicles produced just a few years ago. Inside the filter housing is a high-tech ceramic material that traps the fine particles of soot or black smoke often associated with diesel engines. During normal driving, the soot accumulates and must be burned off to prevent the ceramic material from clogging up. But there's a big difference between this air filter and the exhaust filter. You can replace this air filter quickly and economically. The exhaust filter, you can't. It's a sealed system, so it has to be regenerated. That's just a fancy name for cleaning. This cleaning action occurs frequently and automatically while you're driving. You don't need to remove the filter from the vehicle. During regeneration, through automatic fuel management, temperatures are increased inside the filter to effectively burn off accumulated soot. In other words, you don't have to do anything. You can tell when this regeneration is taking place because this indicator on the instrument panel will glow green. After 20 or 30 minutes of normal driving, the cleaning process will be complete and the green light will go out. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, usually it is. But sometimes there may be circumstances that cause other things to happen. For example, if you operate the vehicle in lots of stop and go driving with extended idling or in extremely cold weather, the automatic regeneration process may not be able to complete its cleaning of the exhaust filter. If that happens, this amber caution light on the instrument panel will illuminate and an audible chime will be heard to indicate that the filter is partially clogged. If the filter is severely clogged, the warning light will glow red. If the amber or red light turns on, you have two choices. You can keep driving for a sufficient period of time, or you can park the vehicle and perform manual regeneration. If you decide to park and regenerate manually, follow these steps. Firmly apply the parking brake and place the transmission in park. If you have a manual transmission, shift it into neutral. With the engine running, depress the regeneration switch. The regeneration process will begin. Keep the vehicle parked and the engine running until the warning lamps go out. Here's something very important to remember. The exhaust gases coming out of the tailpipe are extremely hot during regeneration. That's why there's an exhaust cooler behind the exhaust filter. It cools down the gases before they're released into the atmosphere. If you park the truck to regenerate, don't park over any combustible materials, such as dry leaves or grass. Make sure you park over clear areas away from anything combustible. Here's something else important to remember. If you ignore the red warning light and chime and continue to operate the vehicle without completely regenerating, the orange engine warning lamp will illuminate and the system will reduce engine horsepower. That means the truck will drive really slow. If this happens, the only thing you can do is to return the vehicle to an authorized dealer for service repair. Your boss may not be too happy about that. So, as driver of this truck, it's up to you to pay attention to the warning lights and the audible chime. During normal driving, you won't have to do anything special. But when the amber or red lights turn on and the audible chime is heard, that's when you'll have to take some action. If you can't remember all this when you're operating the vehicle, don't worry. There's a label attached to the sun visor that lists everything you need to know. You can refer to it anytime you need it. There are a couple of other items you should know about when you're operating this truck as well the fuel and oil requirements. 
First, the fuel requirement. Ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel is now required for use in all 2007 and newer diesel engine cars and trucks that operate on public roads and highways. This fuel is available everywhere. You should have no problem finding it. Just look for this label on the fuel pump. It has the term ultra-low and lists 15 parts per million of sulfur. Don't use the old 500 parts per million diesel fuel. If you do, this will prematurely clog your exhaust filter. Next, let's cover the engine oil. This engine requires low ash oil to ensure the emission system remains in top running condition. So, if you add or change the oil, be sure you use only CJ4. You can find this CJ4 designation on the engine oil container. It should be available at most automotive supply stores and your authorized dealer. Don't forget to check the oil level often by depressing the oil check switch and change the oil and filter every 10,000 miles. Let's see if we got everything. Exhaust filter regeneration, ultra low sulfur fuel, CJ4 engine oil. Yep, that looks like everything. If you have any questions about any of this, remember, you can always refer to the instruction label on the sun visor. The owner's manual is also a good source of information. So is your authorized dealer. Thanks for spending these few minutes with me today. It should make your job easier and more worry-free. You're driving a great truck, so enjoy your safe and clean motoring. Take care.